Hello everyone and welcome to this video. So this one will be an important one. I have added suspension part support to the system and this will be available in version 1.2. So if you are watching this before the release, it will be available on September 15th. I've added a look at function to this system so you can set up any suspension variation with this simple function. So as you can see, I have set up the suspension for this truck and you can see how these springs and bars are reacting dynamically to the obstacles. So let's begin with the mesh setup in 3ds Max. I have preferred this model uh, because I felt this will be a great example because all of the parts are exposed. By the way, this model is from Sketchfab and you can find it here in Flawless Normal Store. So as I said before, this function works like a look at constraint. So for any part, there are two ends. One will attach to a mesh and another will look at the mesh. So if you want to connect these two wheels, this mesh will be a connector and will attach from one side to this wheel and the other side to the other wheel. And it will be scaled along its length so it will look like it is attached to the other side and no gap will appear. With this simple principle you can set up your own suspension system. These springs work the same. They are attached to the body from one side and look at the other mesh from the other side. And because it scales, the length will change and it gives the spring movement feeling. These bars also work the same. They are connected to the body from one side and the axles on the other side and they scale to remove any gap between the meshes. So you can see how easy this is. In order for all of these to work, all your suspension parts need to be oriented along the x-axis. I will make a copy of this. I'll move the pivot to one side because that's where it should be attached to the right wheel and then I will rotate it so it will be oriented to forward X. I will need only one of these springs, so I'll make a copy, orient it, and move the pivot to one side. And the last mesh I need is one of these bars. I'll repeat the steps for this one and then move all of these to the origin and export them and import them into Unreal. To know more about exporting and importing the meshes, you can watch the other video in this playlist. So let's go back to Unreal. So as you can see, all of the meshes are imported and ready to be assembled. I will delete this track and add this incomplete version which doesn't have any suspension. Let's open this blueprint. If it shows like this, just click on Open Full Blueprint Editor to open the full blueprint. I have set the meshes and offsets before to save time. So pay attention to this part. Whenever you create a child from a parent blueprint, you can add notes to the construction script and the event graph of the child. But anything you want to use in the child blueprint should make a call to the similar parent node. Otherwise, it will stop the parent node and override it. So if you don't have these orange nodes, which are the parent nodes, make sure you right click on the child nodes and click on add call to parent function to add the parent nodes and connect them together to run both. So why I told you this? Because I want to add some code and I want it to run on editor tick. So I'll double click on this editor tick and I will add a call to parent function. 
so it will consider the editor tick in the parent and not override it. Then I'll add my nodes after these nodes and I'll make sure to connect both of these to them. So when we are in editor, this will fire and when we simulate or render, this guy will fire. So we need both of them connected. To add a suspension node, I'll right click on an empty area and search for CCR. That's for cinematic car rig and then select the CCR suspension function. This node is the general node I've created for all of the suspension parts. This is basically a look at function. You can see it has some inputs and we will go through all of them in this tutorial. So I will start by connecting my nodes to the function. The first input is the suspension mesh. And this is the mesh part that going to be driven by the function. Any bar, spring, axle, wishbone, etc. can be used for this. Next is the parent mesh. The mesh you want to attach your suspension part into. You can specify the socket for parent mesh, so your suspension part will stick to it somewhere other than its pivot. But if you leave this empty, the suspension mesh will stick to it on its pivot. Next one is the look at mesh. The mesh you want your suspension part to look at it. And there's also the socket for that. You always need to connect your car body mesh to the function so the suspension parts will be oriented correctly. So let's begin with the first part. I will create a dummy actor just to be organized. So I click on chassis and click on add and create a child actor and name it suspension parts. I will select it and then drag all of the suspension parts from my content browser under this new actor. Now I need to duplicate some of these. As you can see, I need two axles for front and rear. So I'll name this front axle and then I'll duplicate it and name it rear axle. I need two bars here and here. So I name this one front bar, duplicate it with Ctrl D and name it rear bar. And finally I need four springs. So I name this one front left spring and I will duplicate this three times and name them properly. Now I have every part I need to set up my suspension system. So let's take a look at the car. You can see the front axle needs to be attached to the front right wheel and look at the front left wheel. So I will connect the front axle to the suspension part input. The parent here will be the front right wheel. I will leave the socket empty because I need to connect the suspension part to the center of the wheel. And the pivot is there, so we're all good here. The look at mesh will be the front left wheel and the socket will also be empty. And finally I will connect the body mesh to the input. When I compile, you can see it connects the wheels and the orientation is correct. Let me add a cube here to check if it's working correctly. I will continue to set up the rear axle. I will duplicate the whole thing. To swap this mesh with another mesh, I will drag the new mesh into an empty area on the node. So this way, I will change this to rear axle. I will continue to swap the front wheels with the rear ones. Now when you compile, 
you can see the rear axle is reversed. That's because we only imported the mesh for the front axle, but we also used it for the rear. So we have to enable this mirror parameter to correct that. We're done with our first two parts. To set up the springs, we need to add some sockets to our meshes because we want them to attach and look at specific locations on our meshes. So to add sockets, I will open the axle mesh. Let me quickly delete these previous sockets to start fresh. So you need to remember how you rotated your mesh and exported it. In this case, I rotated this clockwise. So from the pivot to forward X, the first mount is for the right and the second is for the left. I will add the sockets from the socket manager tab. Click on this plus icon. Name this one right. And position it anywhere you need it to be. Duplicate it by pressing Ctrl D and then press F2 to rename. And name this one left. And move it to its location. I will save this one and open the body mesh. Let's delete the sockets I've added before. Add a socket and call it front right. And then position it in the required location. You can use top and bottom views with unlit lighting to make it easier. And finally adjust the height. When you're done, duplicate it and call it front left and move it to its location. And then create the rear sockets. So we're done for now. Now let's configure our springs. I will duplicate one of these functions and then I'll add front right spring as the suspension mesh. And the connection point should be front right socket. So FR for the socket. The spring should look at the front axle, so front axle for look at mesh. And where should it look at? It should look at the right socket. By the way, you can name these sockets anything you want. And don't forget to connect the body mesh. Now if I compile, you can see the first spring is in its place. Not sure if you can see this, but the spring rotates a little bit when it is scaled. That's because it is vertical, so for any suspension part that's supposed to be oriented perfectly vertically, we need to check this vertical parameter to prevent the rotation. I will continue adding other springs by duplicating everything and dragging the required meshes to the nodes and changing the socket names accordingly. Let's increase the body height so we can see the springs better. If you inspected any gaps, you can adjust your socket locations. Let's also repeat these steps for rear springs. You can see how these springs are being scaled, but if I turn off the scale parameter, it will still look at the mesh, but it is not scaled anymore. 
So choose this parameter wisely and always keep it on for spring. The last two meshes are the bars. To set these up, we need to add some more sockets to the body mesh and the axle mesh. I will add the socket on the axle first. Let's call it bar and position it. And then the body. Since we have two sockets here, I will name them front bar and rear bar. And lastly, let's set the functions. Nothing complicated here, just repeating the steps you already know. And let's quickly check it in the viewport. And let's configure the last one by copying all of these and changing meshes and the socket names. So you can see how easy this is. We can use this workflow with any suspension system and many other meshes. You just need to follow this simple concept of attaching to and looking at the other meshes. Just don't forget to orient the parts along the x-axis and you're good to go. I might record tutorials for other mechanisms later on, but for now, this will be the only example to showcase this feature, which will be available on version 1.2. I just wanted to share it with you guys and let you know how this works in advance so you wouldn't be confused when it's released. I will also record another video to highlight all of the other new features of version 1.2. Okay, I think that's all for now. See you later then.